My name is Sean Connick, and I'm the Chief Executive of the John F. Kennedy Trust, and we operate the Dumbrody Famine Ship Experience and the Kennedy Homestead. We're based in New Ross here in County Wexford. Hi, my name's Steve Davin. I'm the Director responsible for Tradition Partnership with Direct Access. Direct Access was set up in 2004 as the Accessibility and Inclusion Consultation Day. So what that means is that we work with um, organisations, benefit museums, tours and venues and so on to look at where they are in terms of accessibility and some of the ways that they can look at improving access. I'm Chris Small and I'm the Head of Visitor Operations at St Paul's Cathedral. The Cathedral's mission is to allow as many people as, as possible to enter the building, experience it for various purposes, whether that's sightseeing and tourism or whether it's worship. And it's a 300 year old building, so that comes with the, the expected challenges that, that many similar institutions face. And my name is Zoe Willis and I'm the Schools Officer here at Canterbury Cathedral. Canterbury Cathedral is of course a very old medieval building. We want to welcome visitors from everywhere of all abilities and all accessibility, but it can sometimes be quite difficult with a building that's as old as this. We have multimedia guides as part of the Cathedral's visitor experience offer. I think we have 10 or 12 different languages, but in addition to that we have um, things like a BSL tour built into the guide which has definitely helped those of visitors who ha are deaf or hard of hearing to be able to access the full visitor experience in the cathedral and, and receive the same information that you know the majority of other visitors are able to access. Every bit of feedback that we've had from the public who've used it has been overwhelmingly positive and it's been really, really well received. Sign language is a language in its own right. So we worked with ATS to create a tour that gives not only a, a background to the cathedral, but also provides a really good wayfinding tool. By using tools like this, it means that people can actually visit the cathedral when they want, access the cathedral at their own speed and make sure that they're covering their own interests. So we worked out the script, we worked closely with ATS to provide the sign language tool. We were happy to trust their expertise in choosing the right person to deliver that sign language tour and also making sure that the, the colours were correct and the backgrounds were correct and that it worked for our audience. People are so pleased to come here and find that, that there's a tour that meets their needs. And we have in-person tours as well, which is fantastic, but actually it's making sure that it's available when that person comes and when they want to do the tour. It's important to consider including both the title and style language with um, all our production, simply because not every deaf person can use sign language, but then again, not every deaf person has the ability to read uh, English or um, Gaelic. We do audio descriptive tours for the public as well. The guides will take you around the cathedral at your own pace and they're trained in describing the different elements of the cathedral, allowing you to touch some of the marble sculptures and explain those to you, taking you to areas of the cathedral where the sounds and effects are different if you speak in certain places, to really give people who are not able to see uh, as much of the cathedral as other visitors might be able to, to give them a full experience of the atmosphere of the cathedral. So the audio descriptive tour is really important because it provides a description as well as providing a wayfinding tool. This cathedral is a very complex building and it can be very difficult to navigate for people that have got sight loss. There are lots of steps, there are uneven floors. So as well as being an informative tool, it is so important that this provides a tool for making people's visits a safe one. The feedback has been very positive. People have felt that their needs are being met, that they have been considered as a visitor, that they are being included in our offer and that what they experience when they come here is as good as any other person that turns up to come and visit the cathedral. It's a busy day in the centre of Dublin and spectators have flocked to the walled left bank of the River Liffey to watch the annual swimming race. Fortunately, the weather is good just a thin layer of white clouds in an otherwise blue sky. 
you can almost hear the cheers from the riverbank as three swimmers in white bathing caps pass by below, doing the front crawl. The artist Jack Yates uses long, loose brush strokes for the river, which flows diagonally from the bottom right corner of this canvas, then disappears towards the centre middle ground, just beyond the bridge. During the ship's construction, I would have been consulted widely in terms of accessibility on the ship, how accessibility was going to operate on the vessel itself, uh, and whether or not maybe, you know, it was going to be a stair uh, lift or whether it was going to be an actual physical lift that would go onto the, the ship itself. And so from day one, uh, and from the outset of the design, the ship was designed with accessibility to the fore. Uh, 2011 been the most uh, recent update to the visitor centre and its redevelopment. The building itself has wheelchair accessible toilets, obviously. Uh, it has lift to the uh, restaurant, which is on the first floor. Uh, and access to the ship is on ramped, uh, getting onto the vessel and then on the ship itself. We recently actually only in the last four years updated the passenger lift on the ship itself. And that's used by families with prams or used by elderly people uh, and used by people in wheelchairs. So the project itself is fully accessible. It needs for to actually consult with uh, deaf people in order to understand what their perception would be or what would be best for each situation. You know, engaging with people with disabilities, someone like myself would know in seconds uh, how to improve or maybe make a suggestion as to how to ensure that access is improved into a lot of these sites. So we as a cathedral have uh, reached out to um, try and get advice on and worked with visitor panels to try and work out what we need to be doing um, from the people who are actually looking for that offer when they come and visit this place. It's absolutely vital to consult with the people that this affects because without actually having their voice, how can you get it right? It's a no-brainer for your organisation to introduce these kinds of access tours because you're going to be able to reach a broader audience and for all of us who work in visitor experience the idea is that we want to be able to welcome as many visitors as possible and to experience these special places in different ways. I'm absolutely sure that audio descriptive tours and BSL will be really really well received by your visitors as they have been here at St Paul's Cathedral try and find somewhere that's that's got comparable offer to you so you can see how what best practice looks like and how different people have tackled the issues and then I would find a trusted partner to work with somebody that you know can actually um, be an expert in all areas you're an expert in your building but you might not necessarily be an expert in providing audio description or sign language and so you need to work with a trusted partner work that needs to be done within the sector to make people aware that this is a huge market that's there. Um, if you're able to advertise that you can facilitate and provide uh, uh, tours that cover uh, the various forms of disability through the various systems. Uh, and um, I think that there's a market there that would cover the cost and the outlay. Disability can be um, quite broad because it ranges from people with visual impairment, uh, people with mobility impairment to um, hearing loss, neurodiversity and everything up in between. So quite often organisations are not quite sure how they may start when they start thinking about accessibility. Becoming more accessible and inclusive for deaf and disabled people is much, much easier now with the latest digital technology and um, tools. Disabled people will generally visit a ramp attraction or a place uh, during off-peak season, which um, therefore will bring your visitors numbered up during relatively quiet periods. You know, this is a conversation that's starting now that will continue uh, over the next number of years and in maybe five or ten years we'll be very proud of what we've achieved from an inclusion, an inclusion and an accessibility stance.